Namaste. This is Dr. B. Amudambige, Associate Professor, PG and Research Department of Mathematics, Sri Sarda College for Women, Salem. Today we are going to see the, to the subject complex analysis 2, in which we are going to see the topic application of Cauchy's residue theorem. Uh, before entering to the application, let us see what is meant by Cauchy's residue theorem. This theorem states that let C be a simple closed contour described in the positive sense. If a function f is analytic inside and on C, except for a finite number of singular points e z k inside the contour C, then integral over C f of e z d e z is given by 2 pi i into summation of residues of f of z at each pole e z equal to e z k and k varies from 1 to n. That means whenever we are given any simple closed contour, then if there are some points which are known as the singular points of the given function f of z, then it is possible to evaluate the integration of that function f of z over the given contour c by finding the result as given on the right hand side that is 2 pi i into sum of the residues of f of z and here is it the residues to be found at each pole is it equal to f of is it equal to is it k in order to see the application of the Cauchy's residue theorem we also need the result of the Cauchy principal value which can be calculated by using this formula that is Cauchy principal value of the integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of x dx can be evaluated by using this expression that is limit r tend to infinity integral minus r to plus r f of x dx. And studying about the Cauchy principal value, we need to know about a remark. Whenever the given function f of x is symmetry, the graph of given function is symmetry or the given function is an even function, then integral 0 to infinity of f of x dx can also be written in the format of 1 by 2 into Cauchy principal value of the total integral of f of x dx with the limits minus infinity to plus infinity. Now let us see a problem as the application of Cauchy's residue theorem that is evaluate integral 0 to infinity dx by x square plus 1 whole thing square. When we see the integrand, integrand means the function which to be integrated under the integral sign is known as the integrand and here the integrand is given by 1 by x square plus 1 whole thing square. So f of x is given by 1 by x square plus 1 whole thing square in this, in this example f of x is given by 1 by x square plus 1 whole thing square as it is an even function definitely we can apply the above remark that is integral 0 to infinity f of x dx equal to 1 by 2 into uh, Cauchy principal value of the total integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of x dx and here we need to integrate the given function f of x around the positively oriented boundary of the semicircular region as shown in the figure and this figure consists of the segment of the real axis from minus r to plus r and the top of the circle is given by mod z in the top of the circle mod z equal to r and so the total contour consists of two different portions one is along the uh, real axis other one is along the semicircle that is given by cr marked by cr so we need to evaluate the given integral over the semicircle and over the um, real axis from minus r to plus r because of that reason 
because of this reason how we can write the full contour that is what now we are going to see so we are given to evaluate integral 0 to infinity 1 by x square plus 1 whole thing square dx this is what the function given um, to evolve it and this integration to be done over the full contour full contour that can uh, that is in the format of a semicircle as well as a real uh, line and uh, when we extend this figure you can understand here we are having the positive direction of x axis on extending this portion we can consider the negative direction of uh, x axis at the same time above to that x, x axis here we can consider the positive direction of y axis and uh, below to the x axis here we can consider the negative direction of y axis of course here we are having the line segment from minus r to plus r because this is the circle having the center in the form r that is this is the circle given in the form modulus of z this is the circle given by mod z is equal to r as we are given the circle in the form mod z is equal to r we can consider the line segment from minus r to plus r as well as the uh, contour and the contour of the semicircle uh, top of the contour is given by the semicircle which is marked by CR and um, so we need to evaluate this full integral from along the along the real axis as well as along the semicircle as we uh, we know that as it is an even function instead of writing in evaluating the integral from 0 to infinity we can also evaluate the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity uh, by using that uh, remark and finally we can rearrange that integral 0 to infinity by using the formula 1 by 2 into integral minus infinity to plus infinity so instead of evaluating the integral given integral from 0 to infinity now we are going to evaluate the integral of the form minus infinity to plus infinity so our aim is now to evaluate integral of the form integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of x dx at the same time, this total integration can be done by using our uh, Cauchy residue theorem. That is, uh, this is in the format of integral over C, f of z, dz. Then, according to the Cauchy residue theorem, this can be written in the form 2 pi i into sum of the residues of sum of the residues of f of z uh, over the poles at each pole we need to find the residues and uh, all those residues to be added so the summation will be varying over the value k which may take the values from 1 to n and the total integration should be done along the real line as well as the top of the semicircle that is CR. So we can write the integration in the form integral minus R to plus R that is integral over C consists of two different portions. One is along the real axis, other one is along the semicircle. When we consider the integration along the real axis, definitely we can consider that the expression in the form f of x as it consists only the real axis there we can consider f of x as it is at the same time when we consider integral over the 
uh, top of the circle, there we can consider both the variables x and y. Therefore, on evaluating the integration over the uh, contour, we need to write, say, at top of the circle, we need to take the expression in the form of f of z instead of f of x. So, when we do the integration over the real axis, we need to consider f of x as it is, and there x will be taking the limits from minus r to plus r as mentioned here. Um, and when we consider the integration over the top of the semicircle, we need to consider both the variables. Um, therefore, we can take that expression in the form f of a z dz over the semicircle cr, and that must be equal to 2 pi i into sum of the residues according to the Cauchy residues theorem, which can be written here 2 pi i into sum of the residues of f of z and uh, here uh, the each residue of the function f of z to be found at each pole z is equal to z k of course here k varies from 1 to n all those residues to be added finally once again i repeat now we need to integrate this integral that is integral over c f of z the same thing to be done over the given contour that consists of two different portions let me show it again and the two different portions are in this format that is one is along the real axis from minus r to plus r other one is along the semicircle over c r because of that reason See, here we are having the real axis minus R2 plus R that is marked by using the red line and the top of the semicircle is marked by, uh, highlighted by yellow color and that consisting of both the variables X and Y. That's why when we evaluate the integral along the real axis, we need to consider only the variable X because along the real axis X, we can consider y is equal to 0. This is what the equation of the uh, real axis because of that reason we can say along the real axis the integration will be changed in, in the format of integral minus r to plus r f of x dx. When we consider the same integral along the top of the circle there we can consider both the variables x and y. So there we can consider the expression of the integrand in the format of f of z and that must be evaluated over cr. That's why we can consider now the total integration in these two formats that is integral from minus r to plus r f of x dx. Other one is integral over cr f of z dz. According to Cauchy's residue theorem, we can write it in the format 2 pi i into sum of residues of f of z. So, as we need only the first integral as given in the problem, let us take even the other integral that is integral over cr also to the right hand side. So we can write now integral from minus r to plus r f of x dx is just equal to 2 pi i into sum of the residues of f of z at each pole and all the residues to be added finally. At the same time, when we take this integration over CR to the right hand side that must be written in the format minus integral over CR f of z dz. So this is what the result we need to evaluate now. Let me mark it as equation number one and let us go, uh, evaluate the right hand side integral that is integral over CR alone separately at first then we will substitute the result of integral over CR f of z dz in this equation number one. Now we are going to evaluate 
integral over CR f of z dz by using the known ideas. We are going to evaluate them. In order to evaluate integral over CR, let us consider modulus of integral over CR f of z dz, which can be written by using the known idea that is less than or equal to integral over CR modulus of f of z dz. When we apply that modulus to the integrand, that must be written as uh, given here. At the same time, modulus of f of z means the given expression as we are given f of x equal to 1 by x square plus 1 whole thing square. We can write that f of z in the form that is 1 by the same expression where x to be replaced by z. So we can write now 1 by z square plus 1 whole thing square this modulus that must be written in the format of 1 by modulus of z square plus 1 whole thing square according to the property of complex numbers and also it is possible to write that modulus of z square plus 1 can be evaluated separately that is modulus of z square plus 1 whole thing square definitely can be written in the format that is modulus of z square in the first place minus 1 in the second place as we are applying that uh, negative sign for the second term in between of these two expressions we need to consider this greater than or equal to symbol according to the property of complex numbers so because of that reason we can say now modulus of f of z will be less than or equal to let us apply this result in the earlier e inequality so that we can write 1 by modulus of z square plus 1 whole thing square will be less than or equal to 1 by modulus of z square minus 1 whole thing square and let us apply the uh, expression of the circle that is mod z equal to r so we can write now 1 by r square minus 1 whole thing square. This is the inequality we get for modulus of f of z. Now let us apply this result in the above integral where we need to evaluate the integral of f of z dz over cr. At the same time, as we are having the limits with the minus infinity to plus infinity, According to the Cauchy principle value, we need to apply limit r tends to infinity on both the sides. So, let us evaluate integral modulus of integral over uh, CR f of z dz by applying the limit. Applying the limit means for the same expression, now we need to take uh, the limit as r tends to infinity according to the Cauchy principle value. Uh, just now we have seen that uh, this expression is less than or equal to limit can be written as it is limit r tends to infinity and the full integral modulus of this expression is less than or equal to 1 by r square minus 1 whole thing square and um, uh, as we are having f of it modulus of f of it alone less than or equal to this expression um, except this expression the other one that is integral over cr dz to be written separately that is in this full integral uh, modulus of Integral over CR f of z dz is less than or equal to integral of mod f of z dz with this limit. On applying the inequality for modulus of f of z, we can write a modulus of f of z is less than or equal to 1 by r square minus 1 whole thing square. Uh, so this expression which is independent of the integral 
can be taken outside because the integration to be done with respect to Z. And uh, when you see this expression under the integral sign, we can understand the function Z to be DZ to be integrated. We know that integral and uh, differentiations are inverse quantities because of that known result. We can write here more integral of uh, dz as z. Later, we can apply z equal to r. At the same time, integral of dz over r represents, that represents the uh, half of the circumference of the circle. Uh, full circumference of your circle will be 2 pi r. As we are having only the semicircle, here we can write half of the portion of the circumference of the circle that is pi r, where integral over cr dz represents circumference of the semicircle that is half of the full circumference, which can be written in the format pi r. Now, what we can do is let us consider this limit as it is, and before applying the limit, let us take that r square outside of the denominator. When we take r square outside of the denominator, remember whole thing square is also there. So we can write one in the first place where we have taken that r square outside at the same time. In the second term where we are not having r square to be written that r square in the denominator, whole thing square we are having. So in the denominator, we are having R cube. So one time of R from the numerator will be applied, uh, will be cancelled. So we can write then limit R tends to infinity of pi in the numerator, R cube in the denominator. At the same time, 1 by 1 minus 1 by R square, whole thing square. Now we are ready to apply the limit wherever we are having R. And applying the limit, uh, what will happen? Anything by infinity, here also anything by infinity. So the total expression, anything by infinity will be zero. We all know that. Therefore, uh, anything by infinity, zero result can be applied here. Therefore, the full expression tends to zero as R tend to infinity. Now we are going to apply this expression in equation number one. So we can apply evaluation of the integral of f of z over the semicircle CR in equation number one. So in equation number one, what we had already integral minus r2 plus r f of x dx that is equal to 2 pi i into sum of the residues of f of z minus integral over cr f of z dz. We had this expression. Now, in order to uh, get the exact expression as given in the problem, let us apply the limit r tends to infinity on all the places of this equation. So, we can write then integral r ten, limit r tends to infinity of integral minus r2 plus r f of x dx is equal to limit r tends to infinity of 2 pi i into sum of the residues of f of z at each pole. We need to find the residue that must be remembered on all the time and uh, minus limit r tends to infinity integral over cr f of z uh, dz and applying the limit to the right hand side just now we have evaluated this full integral value is zero at the same time there is no r in this expression so this limit will not affect this uh, residues therefore we can write simply 2 pi i into some of the residues of f of z at the same time what we are getting on the left hand side on applying the limit here we get integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of x dx. So this is what the latest result. Let me mark it as equation number two. 
Now let us evaluate the residues of f of z. Let us find the residues of f of z at each of its pole. Then finally apply them on the right hand side of this equation too. So that we can evaluate integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of x dx. Now we are going to find the singularities of f of z so that we can find the residues of f of z at each pole. So here next our aim is to find residues of f of z. This is what the aim of the present step. For that, let us consider the singularities. Uh, the singularities of f of z can be obtained by equating the denominator to d and denominator of f of z to 0, that is z square plus 1 whole thing square equal to 0. On equating them, we get z square plus 1 equal to 0 two times. Therefore, we can also say that z square is equal to minus 1. Otherwise, z is equal to plus or minus i. Plus or minus i for two times. As we are getting the singularities, that is poles of um, z are of order 2, we can identify the pole which one lies inside of the contour and which one lies outside of the contour. We know that the contour is in this format where the contour having a real axis from minus r to plus r and the positive orientation is given in this way and this is what the positive direction of y axis. So between the two poles z is equal to plus i and z is equal to minus i, we can consider z is equal to plus i alone within the contour and definitely z is equal to minus i will lie outside of the contour because we know that z always can be written in the format of x plus i y. z is equal to plus or minus i can be written in the form 0 plus or minus i z is equal to plus or minus i can be written in the form z is equal to plus or minus i must be written in the form x plus or minus i where in place of x we are not given any quantity means that must be identified as zero so here x is equal to 0. That means the contour which is above to the real axis to be taken where we are given um, that uh, y expression is equal to 1. So z is equal to i lies in within the contour and z is equal to minus i lies outside of the contour. So we can conclude here z is equal to i is a pole of order 2. That's say a pole of order 2. Therefore, we need to find the residue of f of z only at the pole z is equal to i, which is a pole of order 2. Before finding the residues, let us rearrange that expression of f of z according to the required format. We know that z, f of z can be written in the form z square plus 1 whole thing square, which can be rewritten in the form that is z square plus 1 can be considered in the format of a square minus b square which can be written in the form a plus b into a minus b that means z plus i into z minus i and uh, without doubt whole thing square is there and between these two expressions now we can rearrange them in this format as we are having z equal to plus i lies inside the contour I accept that pole other expression to be taken to the numerator therefore we can write z plus i whole thing square to be taken to the numerator and in the denominator we can consider z minus i by using which we get the we got the pole z is equal to i as a pole of order 2. Now we can understand this f of z is totally in the format of pi of z divided by z minus i 
whole thing square. Just we have rearranged the given function f of z in this format that is pi of z by z minus i whole thing square. As z is equal to i is a pole of order 2, we need to find the residue of f of z at z is equal to i, which can be evaluated by using the formula pi dash of z at z is equal to i. Now, we are going to find the residue of f of z at the pole z is equal to i of order 2. As z is equal to i is a pole of order 2, what we are going to do is now by using the known formula for finding the residues, we can write residue of f of z equal to pi dash of z at z is equal to i. By known formula for finding the residues, we can evaluate residue of f of z by using this formula as z is equal to i is a pole of order 2, we need to consider the first order derivative of pi of z. And so what we have considered already for pi of z, pi of z is equal to 1 by z plus i whole thing square. This is what the expression we have considered for pi of z. So pi dash of z means we need to take that z plus i to the numerator where which can be written in the form minus 2 into um, z plus i whole thing power minus 2 on differentiating that expression we can get minus 2 into z plus i power minus 2 minus 1 that is minus 3. See pi of z can be written in the form z plus i power minus 2. On differentiating this expression we are getting minus 2 into z plus i power minus 3. Now According to the formula, we need to evaluate this expression at z is equal to i. z is equal to i means what we are getting finally minus 2 divided by i plus i power 3. We can take that expression to the denominator. So finally, we are getting i plus i power 3 in the denominator. At the same time, if we are having minus 2 in the numerator. So we can write now minus 2 divided by 2i power 3. This 3 can be applied to each term separately. So we are getting 2 into 2 into 2 that means 8. At the same time i cube means i square into i which can be written in the form minus i because i square is equal to minus 1. So finally we get residue of f of z in this format minus 1 divided by 4i because 2 and 8 can be simplified. Therefore, finally we are getting residue of f of z at z is equal to i in this format minus 4 by i. Now we can evaluate 2 pi i into residue of f of z. As we are having only one residue there, we can consider 2 pi i into residue of f of z at z is equal to i. If there is more than one residue, all the residues to be added. But at present for the given problem, we got only one residue. So we can apply that residue alone here on the right hand side of the earlier equation. By simplifying which finally we are getting its result in the form. We can simplify the numbers. So we are getting. Result in the form. 1 pi in the numerator, 1, 2 in the denominator. This is the final result. Uh, at the same time, here is one minus sign, there is one minus sign. So we can get here plus 1 by 4i. So 1 by 4i we get, finally we get 2 pi i into residue of f of z at z is equal to i in the format pi by 2. Now we can substitute this result in the earlier equation. So 
finally we get integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of x dx equal to 2 pi i into sum of the residues of f of z 2 pi i into sum of the residues we can substitute the residue value on the right hand side so we can write now integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of x dx equal to 2 pi i into sum of the residues of f of z as we got only one residue uh, that means z is equal to i there is no no need of this summation so we can we got this result in the format of pi by 2 we can substitute that result here since the given function f of x equal to 1 by x square plus 1 is even function one more square is there so it is a assured thing it is an assured thing that f of x is an even function so because of that reason we can write this integral in the form that is integral zero to infinity can be taken in the form twice of integral zero to infinity f of x means one by x square plus one whole thing square dx that is equal to pi by 2 as we need only this integral 1 by x square plus 1 whole thing square dx we can take this 2 to the right hand side so finally we get pi by 4 this is the exact solution of the given function so when we need to evaluate such type of integrals with the limits 0 to infinity or minus infinity to plus infinity, we can very well apply the Cauchy residue theorem in order to evaluate this full expression. So the Cauchy residue theorem says that integral over C f of z dz equal to 2 pi i into some, uh, some of the residues of f of z. In order to evaluate uh, this problem, we need to apply both the Cauchy residue theorem as well as the Cauchy principal value. Cauchy principal value says as uh, if the function is an even function or if the graph is symmetry, then integral 0 to infinity can be written in the form half times of integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of x dx. Otherwise, integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of x dx can be written in the form 2 times of integral 0 to infinity. So, in this way, we can evaluate the given integral. In such a way, uh, we can understand the application of Cauchy residue theorem. Thank you.